13th July 2023. Um, we're going to look at Romans 8, chapter 8. And Trevor's going to open with prayer, and then he's going to read the first verse, and then we're going to take it from there. So over to you, Trevor. Yeah, good morning, brothers and sisters. Uh, we're praying today, and we're giving God all the glory. We acknowledge God today. We acknowledge the Holy Spirit. We acknowledge the Son of God, Jesus, and the Holy and the blood of Jesus, and the Father. So, Father, we thank you this day. We pray, Lord, as we consider your word, as we study your word, that you would give us wisdom, understanding, enlighten our eyes, Open our ears to our eyes to see the precious truths from your word. Thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you for our brothers and sisters all over the world who are listening to this. And uh, we pray you'll be glorified, Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So Trevor's going to read Romans 8, verse 1, in the New King James ber uh, Version. New King James Version. Okay. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 1, New King James Version. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Just read it once more, Trevor. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but walk according to the Spirit. Amen. 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 So, I'm just going to put the microphone here, and I'm going to switch it back over here for a second. Okay, so we've heard very clearly there what God said <clears throat> to the Christians in Rome through Paul, this letter is a definitive verse in the context of the whole book of uh, Romans, but in the context of the whole New Testament, and Trevor obviously rightly said about the blood of Jesus Christ, um, and, and the blood of Christ is on us, which has separated us from the spirits of this world. So I, I want to just look at that specific uh, verse, which is often misquoted by Christians, to justify the fact that they're living a sinful life and using the grace of God to like an excuse that God will forgive me. Every time I sin, God will forgive me. And they use God like some form of insurance policy to get them out of jail every time I sin. So this is a serious scripture, Romans 8 verse 1, and in the New King James Version Bible, uh, obviously, the NIV doesn't have the full quote. It has an asterisk which takes you to the small print at the bottom of the page, which then includes the rest of the scripture. But if you've got small Gideon Bibles, which are NIV version, there is no small print, no asterisk. So it's a misleading scripture in the NIV because that's what Christians quote. There is no con condemnation because I'm in Christ Jesus. And when you say to them, okay, what's the rest of that verse? <clears throat> they have no idea because they've been brought up on NIV and they never bothered to read the small print. And that's how I was for many years until Trevor challenged me and what's the rest of it? And I didn't remember there was more to it. I looked it up and there was the small print. So now when I quote that scripture or when I hear that scripture quoted to me and they don't complete the sentence that says something to me about that person. Ignorance or a willful misunderstanding of scripture quoting NIV as their get out of jail card. So Romans 8 verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Verse 2, for the law of the Holy Spirit of life in Christ Jesus 
has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Let me read that again. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Verse 4, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Holy Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do do mind the things of the flesh but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit let's talk about the mind verse 6 for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity towards God, against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be the carnal mind. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. 100%. If you live according to the flesh, not according to the Holy Spirit, but you're living according to your sinful nature, then that doesn't please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Holy Spirit. So, if so be that, the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man has not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. He is not of Christ, if he's not in the Spirit of Christ. So verse 1, there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus who do not live according to sinful nature, but we do live according to the Holy Spirit. Verse 10, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. The Holy Spirit is life because of righteousness. God is in you and he's alive in you. And the righteousness of Christ becomes the righteousness you live in, you live by, and God demonstrates his righteousness through you according to the Holy Spirit God leads you to do what's right to do what's right to say what's right and to be right with him God and to live at peace with all people around you as much as that is possible for you to do <clears throat> verse 11 but if the Holy Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Holy Spirit who dwells within you. Verse 12, we are heirs with Christ. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, not to live according to the flesh, for if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you live through the Holy Spirit to mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. You are sons of God with a small s and a big G. We are sons of God. You are our siblings in Christ 
part of the one family of God throughout this world. Those of you who live according to the Holy Spirit, not, not, not according to the sinful nature. There is no excuse for sin. You cannot say God is tempting you to sin. Of course, free will allows you to sin, and there is a way back to God, but when God says your sins are forgiven, do not do that again, God is not joking. God is serious. He's warning you, he's warning me, the sins that you did when you were a young Christian. And it's partly ignorance, partly willfulness, flesh. But when we're learning, when we're growing, we put away childish things. Things we did, things we said, even as a young Christian. God corrects us. God teaches us. God prunes us. God fashions us. And part of that process is don't do it again. Today we are focusing again on the lost, those with addictions linked to a mental illness, linked to emotional dysfunction. The, the, the two areas of the soul, the mind and the emotions, which are damaged, often leads people to an addiction of one sort or another, a dependency on a substance, a codependency on a person, both of which become idolatrous. They need the substance, they need the person more than the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is emphasizing the Lordship of Jesus, the Kingship of Jesus, the rule of Sovereign Lord Jesus Christ over me, my personal life, and whatever I say has to be in the Holy Spirit. Otherwise it's pointless. It's just empty words. And I'm not going to say things that people want me to say. I'm not going to, to appease their itching ears to, to hear what they want to say. I know what they want me to say. But I can't tell them the things they want me to say. I have to speak the truth in love. That's what 1 Corinthians 13 was about yesterday. 1 Corinthians 14, the day before, orderly worship in twos and threes. Mm. So I'm going to make this very, very clear for me, for Trevor, for us, going forward in Christ. Therefore, there is condemnation for those who call themselves Christian. They say out of their mouths they are of Christ. They even say they're born again. They even say they are baptized with the Holy Spirit. There is condemnation for them if they are walking after their flesh. Their flesh, the flesh of others, the flesh of this world. There is condemnation for them because they are, they are walking after their flesh. Their flesh, the world's flesh, the flesh of others around them. But they're not walking after the Holy Spirit. And if God sends somebody to them to say something prophetic, stop sinning. Meditate on Hebrews 6 and 10, 1 John 3, Romans 6, 2 Peter 2, 20 to 22. This comes down to deliberate sin. And you can't say God is tempting you to sin. You can't say that God is wanting you to sin to teach you a lesson. You know. If you have the Holy Spirit, you know. This is not a time for deliberate sin. Because that is crucifying Christ all over again. Read those passages. Hebrews 6 and 10. 1 John 3. Romans 6, 2 Peter 2, 20 to 22. This is a holy hedge of scripture 
that keeps me in and on the narrow way. And I choose Christ today. I put on Christ today. I choose to remain in Christ today by my own human will because I know the truth. If I choose to not be in Christ, he won't remain in me. And this is all about God's sovereignty to bless whom he bless, to favour those he favours, to give us the Holy Spirit. But if we sin, that Holy Spirit is withdrawn from us so that we know we're sinning. We're talking about addictions. We're talking about dependencies on things, substances, drugs, chemicals, rituals, so-called sacraments, so-called prayers. And religion itself can be a drug that you need once a week, twice a week, every day. Religious rituals that get you through the day. But God is not an idol. God is not religion. The uncreated creator created us in his image to worship him, the uncreated creator. In the Holy Spirit, in Christ, under the blood of the Lamb, every day, one day of salvation at a time, every hour, every minute, every second. It's a high calling. There are those who have absolutely no idea what it is to be born of Christ. They've been saved, quotes, saved by the church they go to. They've been given a job in the church they go to. They serve the church they go to. But God is not the employer and they are not the employees. The body of Christ is the body of Christ. We are members of Christ. Christ is not an organization. God himself is not of this world. God created this world and everything in it, including human beings, including the spirit of man in his image. But man is not God. Man becomes an idol. God is not pleased. So, Father God, we want to conclude this and to pray, Lord, that your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven, that this day that you give us the daily bread that we need. So over to Trevor to close with prayer. We're off to meet someone to discuss a, a, a delicate situation. Yeah, Father, we thank you for your word again. And just pray, Father, your word will fall in good ground today. We'll bear fruit 30, 60, 100 fold. So, Father, we just thank you for today. Just go ahead of our brothers and sisters today. May we be glorified in our lives. May we be sincere witnesses for you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you. Keep in touch. God bless.